Hey guys, it's Miki ASMR here, and today I'm going to be reading Anoi Kawatoru X Listener. This one's titled Heartbreaker, and yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. Oi Kawatoru, despite the overall majority opinion, wasn't really a player. Sure, one could question that many a jealous, spiteful boy or a rejected sad girl from a Josai would receive the exact opposite response, that he was, very much so, a player. After all, a boy who had almost every single girl in his general vicinity fawning over him couldn't not be a player, right? It was such a well-known fact in other schools, rather than just his own, that many girls had been reduced into tears after he had refused their confession, and the rumors consistently were spinning around that he had a new girlfriend, prettier than the previous one, every month. Boys didn't understand his popularity while girls pined for just a chance to catch his interest for even a moment. In the eyes of the people that didn't know him, Oikawa Toru was indeed a merciless player. Oikawa himself, though, was more of a self-centered heartbreaker than a ruthless, con conniving playboy image that his mannerisms and behaviors had conjured him to. He really couldn't do anything about the fact that girls seemed to fall in love with him so easily. He wasn't one to give his heart away so casually, and to end up... And so the end was always a firm but polite no, on his part, with tears on the confessors, it wasn't really his fault that he had—he was just so damn charming and handsome that he. But he had to crumble the hopes of any girls who thought that they could be with him. It wasn't his fault, really. It wasn't. He only had the grand total of three girlfriends in his life, two if you didn't count a four-day relationship that he had in the beginning of middle school, and the second one started during his first year of Abujosai, involving the girl who couldn't take his attention away, or couldn't take the attention he drew from all the other girls, and the third one had ended halfway through his final year when she couldn't handle his utter dedication for volleyball, the time he, wait, the only time he was ever grateful for his reputation for breaking up with girls was then. Lord, he knew that his pride couldn't handle it if it got around that she'd ended it with him because he was more interested in volleyball. He knew that it wasn't the attention, wait, he knew it was the attention that he had lavished girls with, that special, destructive kind that he would direct towards one girl in particular and make her fall head over heels, while he remained safely distant and outwardly reachable. That was the cause of his notorious reputation. He knew that the claims weren't entirely true, but he couldn't be bothered to dispel them, either. He liked it, the thrill that it caused the course, the thrill that it caused to course on his spine, the interest that people would shower upon him that boosted his ego just that little bit more. I mean, what was wrong with it? A harmless touch here, a lingering glance there. It was all fine, as long as he didn't let it go too far. Oikawa Toru was perfectly content to write out his infamousness until the day that he ceased to exist, whether that be sooner or later. That is, until he met you. There's like a P wiggly. I think this is like a past. So, um, yeah, I think it is. So, ooh. he didn't know then, and he still didn't know when he looked back on it years later. There was no real reason for you to catch his eye, at least at first. It was just another boring day surrounded by the same boring people listening to the same boring teacher speak about the same boring subject. And you were just another gray face to board, to the bored, bored boy. You shouldn't have made much of a difference, but for some reason, you did. We have a new student joining us today. He remembered the moment as clear as day when you walked in. You were a normal looking thing, nothing too spectacular, nothing too eye-catching, but cute and simple. You had a sweet, nervous smile and innocently sparkling eyes as you, as you had introduced yourself, and he could already feel himself both disregard you. He could already feel himself disregard you, and expect your eventual advent oh my god and expect you to eventually admire him it was only natural of course then when he smiled at you wait when he had smiled at you after you took a seat he felt a bizarre rush when you had returned it it wasn't anything different from how it usually was and neither was your response a pretty wide grin smile in your dimples and your cheeks as they were stained pink he had seen that same expression littered on so many girls' faces, yet something about yours made him falter in the most peculiar way, and that's what happened. His own interests sparked in an ordinary girl. 
It was also the day when he had made his first mistake, underest underestimating Yen. He would he made so sure that you had been solved. Wait, sorry. He was so sure that you had solved the second. What? He was so sure he had solved you the moment that he laid eyes on you. Adorable and uncomplicated, fragile and easily attached. You exuded traits like these, a peculiar innocence, a blissful ignorance that he found refreshing. He liked the idea of being the one to ruin it, a thought that both scared him and excited him. He wanted to be your first experience, the one that you would remember and cherish, hate and regret. He wanted to mark you. You were so accommodating, immediately latching on and soaking onto his attention. And soaking in his attention, you ignored, or rather, didn't notice them. The glares, the grumblings that you had received as he looked at you, stayed only with you. You had gotten on so well on the volleyball team, and Oikawa couldn't help but be entertained by Kandaichi. By the way, Kandaichi seemed to shut you, or shut down around you. Oazumi disapproved of what he was doing, but Oikawa brushed him off. She's so precious, Iwa-chan. How could I not like her? And that was that. And in a s oh my god. It certainly helped Oikawa's case that the ace of Seijo managed to strike up a pleasant conversation, or pleasant friendship with you from the get-go. Built between minutes, not spent with Oikawa, built on a small, gentle fondness and mutual interest for each other. O Oikawa didn't really know why you had found Oizumi jokes funny, because they weren't, or how you both cared for that stupid book so much and you could talk about it for days straight. But it didn't matter as long as Oizumi liked you enough to keep silent about Oikawa's frivolousness, frivolous tendencies. He was rather surprised about how agreeable you were. You were always there to talk, or go out for a walk, or to eat lunch with him. You showed up at each of his practices to cheer him on. You were open and easy to go around, or you were open and easy to be around, always willing to listen and ramble about volleyball or whatever else without judgment to pass or a bias to place. And the more time that Oikawa had spent with you, the more he legitimately found himself seeking you out. You weren't difficult to get attached to. Oikawa had learned that beneath his pliable and soft exterior, or beneath a soft and pliable exterior, was a cheeky, interesting personality. Quiet outgoings and short conversations turned into playful and sarcastic words, laced with undertones of and light feathered touches lining with teasing promises that continued to stroke that curious flame within him. The obedience and compliance disappeared. You would make excuses about why you could meet him, became too familiar with the other boys, and didn't look his way as often as you might have. You reeled him in more and more every day. There was a part of him that was annoyed, but a bigger one that was attracted to this 180 of the original version of you. He liked that you didn't just play into his hands, but rather danced around his intentions and placed your own upon him. You were new, you were different, and you were the beginning to lead Oikawa by his own leash. Suddenly, you were all he could see, and you were no longer just simple nor cute, but beautiful and bright, and all he would think about, the way your eyes would light up, or how your hair shone and your lips quirked, or your hand brushed his. He found himself focusing on the tiniest details until he became so worked up just when he had to see you. But beyond all of that, all the runarounds and toyings, there was affection. A mutual, true affection that had stopped Oikawa some- or that stopped Oikawa sometimes, making him consider just what he was getting into for once. But you had managed to root your influence more deeply in than the uncertainty that had been blooming in his- in the depths of his mind. He had never imagined that the one getting kissed would rather be doing the kissing, but when time came, you were the one who leaned in and captured his lips first, then you pulled away and he couldn't help but follow your retreating smile. It was short and soft, but then rough, lingering, long, but you always held him so tenderly, so gently. He had passed onto you that night, bathed in the attention that usually that he usually poured out, relishing it, in that quiet, warm love that was so uniquely yours. There was a long, or there were long, needy looks, 
short, knowing glances, impatient fingers and roaming hands and hearts, dates where he could just be with you for hours and he had never once felt the need to branch off or leave you. The time that you had spent apart caused him to pine rather than you. He laid in his bed for once without you and looked wait, he laid in his bed once with you and looked admired, adored, and swore that he had never been happier than when you were with him. He drank you in just like that. He was drowning in you. And to Oikawa, it was sweet. It was a sweet, sweet way to go. He didn't care to step back and reevaluate when he was so deep within you. It was all so gradual, but his fall was anything but. All too hard and too fast. Oikawa Toru was in love. Oikawa had given himself, given all of himself to you before realizing that you hadn't done the same. If his mind wasn't as foggy, wait, it was if his mind was foggy and was beginning to clear the day he saw you with the wise of me standing in the corner. So close. Too close. He didn't know when he had let his judgment become so hazed, but a certain clarity dawned upon him in that moment, only to be replaced with an angry confusion, an abrupt, baseless jealousy. Why? He continued to fall from that high place, on that point where you to notice the little things, the reluctancy in the kiss, an excuse here or there too many times, a silent refusal to his touch. And yet, on the flip side, here you were with someone else, his best friend, giggling and smiling away, acting like you weren't completely sidelining him. He didn't understand, and he didn't want to. Since when were you and Awazumi so friendly? Every interaction that he had witnessed were played over and over in his head, wondering, agonizing over what was going on. Had the two of you always been so close? Since when did you start cheering on Awazumi too? Spending your lunches and your breaks and weekends with him? When did he go from Awazumi san to Iwachan to just Hajime? When had you begun to leave Oikawa behind for someone else? He liked to trick himself to think that he was overreacting, but it wasn't... Wait, that wasn't... Wait, that it wasn't real and that he, the warm smiles and heartfelt words weren't something that he could simply deny or ignore. This came with the realization and acceptance that wasn't all too sudden that he believed. He would lay there and think back to what he would see in his mind, his heart had originally blocked out when he had thought that you were the one that he would turn your gaze to. Small things led to bigger ones as he recalled how you would how you would hand a wise me towels and water first at practice, how your calls of encouragement were always much louder when they were for him, how you made plans with him and smiled much wider at him than you did to Aikawa. It was in the red cheeks and the stuttered sentences between you two and his best friend that he knew that he was the one left behind. However, slowly or not, he couldn't know. The pain, at first, was jolting, fresh, and impossible to process to the boy who was still deep in love with the girl who would no longer look his way. His chest stung and burned as it constricted, and he wanted to know everything when you would stop loving him, when you had realized that it was no longer him but a wise of me. Later on, it was deep and aching, spreading sorely throughout his body and making him feel heavy. The pain sunk low as it throbbed in an ever-consisting reminder of what he was losing. Waikawa could barely stop himself from texting you over and over and over, the part of himself that he knew couldn't handle if he kept doing so. He was... When he was with you, he felt so overwhelmed. He was so overcome and in love that he felt like he might shatter, explode with something he couldn't contain or explain, and he needed to know when it suddenly wasn't enough for you, and that, and when it became everything to him. He wanted to know why he did already, but at the same time, he had no clue. It didn't want one either. He acted like nothing was different, or at least he tried. Keeping the venom out of his tone and that grimace on his, off of his face was difficult whenever he saw either of you two together, and the jealousy was the only thing that consumed him. 
it wasn't until there was stubborn or it wasn't long until there was rumors that stubborn Owaizumi Hajime had confessed to a girl that was that Oikawa oh my god that Hajime Owaizumi had confessed to a girl and that Oikawa's girlfriend was planning on leaving him even the one about the two of them being caught kissing and Oikawa had reached his breaking point at Owaizumi as he finally came up to him about you first name wants to talk to you he hated the way your name came off of Oizumi's lips, and even more so that he felt so maliciously towards the both of you, towards the boy in front of him, his best friend since childhood. Oizumi didn't pretend to hide his guilt. He thought it, rem thought though it remained unspoken. He met Oikawa's eyes for the second, for a second, but then his fingers fitted away, in a way that was unlike himself, strained and awkward. Oikawa could do nothing but nodded him, and he almost wanted to laugh at the fact that you had gotten a wise me to retrieve him, but he also knew that he couldn't have sought, sought you, that he wouldn't, couldn't, oh my god, that he wouldn't have sought you out if he hadn't been confronted either. Just as he was about to wander off to find you, he'd stopped dead in his tracks by wise me's next words. I'm, I'm sorry. I do love her, you know? I love her. It wasn't a question, but a statement, a surefire admittance that had taken place between oh my God, that had taken place between you and him. A surge of twin anger and pain had caused had been caused to form in Oikawa's chest, so stifling that he couldn't even breathe to speak up. So instead, he left Oizumi standing there in a quiet classroom, silently, reluctantly, in knowledge. You were sitting on the bench as you were eating lunch with him. Or that you had always eaten lunch with him at. The memory caused disgust rather than fondness to bubble up in Oikawa's gut. There was no pleasant greeting, no fake smiles, or anything to cushion the blow of the false sense of warmth and security. You waited, but... You waited, but a few long seconds... You waited a few long seconds before uttering... It's not like I don't like you, Toru, but I'm I'm in love with him, and I don't think that it's right for either of us to continue on like this when I care about someone else like that. He didn't know if it hurt more or less to hear it from you. He had felt dulled from what a wise me had confessed to him, but something about hearing it from the girl he was still so deeply in love with had hammered that imaginary final nail into his heart severing that last connection that he still had. He mimicked his reaction to Iwaizumi's. He nodded, stood up, and forced himself to simply say, I agree. He needed to hear that, for himself. If you're in love with Iwachan, then who am I to get in the way of your relationship, right? It almost hurt himself to admit it. He found. The weeks that had followed were... Wait, sorry. The weeks that followed were interspersed with awkwardness from all the parties. It was still some time before you and Oizumi had officially began dating, but Oikawa knew better. When he saw the two of you, he knew it was going to be, or he knew it was going to be on the second you had ended it with him. Of course, there was people with questions, but most of them were smart enough to not actually voice them to Oikawa. Everyone knew better. The emotions that were mixing inside of him, or there was emotions mixing inside of him. Some days, there was nothing. He was just consumed with... On other days, he was consumed with raging sadness, followed by a deep-seated fury in, in a damaging, dangerous way, knowing simply as jealousy, while most was kind of a volatile mess of everything and more. He hated that he had fallen in love with you. And he hated that he was still in love with you, and that he couldn't actually hate you or Wizumi. You were the girl that he was in love with, but you were also his friend, and Wizumi was his best friend. Try as he might, he knew he could never truly hate either of you. That was, or that one day, he could have stopped this and gone back into repairing the relationship with the two of you. But now wasn't the time for that. Not now. It wasn't the right time. A month after it happened, he understood something. 
He thought about all the times before when he had toyed with girls' feelings, flirted with her like it was nothing, treated their relationship like a pleasant co convenience. His mind had filled with moments that he had told them that he wasn't interested in them, when they confessed to him, and how sad they would become, how immediate sense of loss. How, after a few days, he would be chatting up with the prettiest girl who caught his eye. He had realized exactly what he had been dishing out the entire time, and could only cry laugh at the irony of it. The heartbreaker who could play a game of two by himself. Wait, sorry. The heartbreaker was a game that only two could play, but only one could win. And this time, Mikawa Toru had lost. Bro, that was depressing. I thought you were gonna be with Raikawa, but no, he broke his heart. I mean, honestly, it sounds low-key kind of fun, cause like, I would low-key want to do that. Not gonna lie. But anyways, if you guys didn't, did enjoy, if you did, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can notified every time I post a video. And also comment down below some requests so I can do them. And also like the video because it's something for the YouTube algorithm. And thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic night. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.